Hey guys, what's up? So, if you're watching this video, you're starting to watch my year-end countdown list. Now, just before you freak out and say you look a bit different, or the background looks a bit different, or whatever, I film these um, sometime <clears throat> before, a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, so stuff's going to look a little bit different. My face, the background, everything. And also, I apologize for some of the camera shots and some of the videos. They're not the best. You'll see why I kind of cut one of the vinyls um, in half <clears throat> on the camera during those shots, so I apologize for that. But anyway, just wanted to give you those kind of heads up that these were recorded weeks beforehand, so I had time to edit them and go over them. But, um, yeah, without further ado, <clears throat> let's just enjoy this year in this video. You guys, I'm excited. This year is fastly coming to an end, and I am here to start my first ever year-end list, where I give you 10, 15, 20 of the best and of the worst of the year. And I'm filming this a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, this should be out the day after Thanksgiving, so just bear with me here. I just have a lot to edit, so I'm doing these ahead of time. But I figure this is all about the songs. This video, or the first two videos, I should say, in the series. And these are going to be the ten worst songs of 2018. At least ones that I've heard, and ones that I don't really enjoy um, at all myself. So this is all just based on my opinion. And you don't necessarily have to go and hate these songs because I hate them. If you like them, that's fine. But this, these songs just don't resonate with me as the others that we're going to see in the best of. So, yeah. Let's kick it off with a band that I fairly enjoy at number 10. Panic at the Disco with Hey Look Ma, I Made It. It's just, to me it seems like a braggy song, like, we get it, you made it, you're big. The same thing happened 13 years ago when you released I Write Sins, Not Tragedies. You hit it big, and, you know, now you're just kind of rubbing it a little more like, oh, I'm pretty much solo now, I can do whatever the hell I want. It's like, we get it, okay? I, I, I'm all for braggy songs, but when it's just so downright pretentious like that, it's like, why even give me the, that content when, you know, you're just going to just say, hey, fuck everybody else who was here before me. I'm, I'm the best at this point in time, because really, the album itself was garbage, and this song did not help its cause at all. There was good songs on that album, but this one is definitely... Definitely not one of them, just because it's so so childish, in my opinion, and just not enjoyable. Hello, hello, let me tell you what it's like to be a zero, zero. Let me show you what it's like to always feel, feel. Like I'm empty and there's nothing really real, real. I'm looking for a way out. Hello, hello, let me tell you what it's like to be a zero, zero. Let me show you what it's like to never feel, feel. You know, sometimes bands just don't give a shit and just throw something out there for when a movie producer or executive says, hey, we want a song for this certain movie. Can you can you make us one or can you, can you pull a song off your album that would seem to fit the intensity of the album or I guess they would pick in itself? And we have Zero by the Imagine Dragons coming in at number nine, used for the Wreck-It Ralph, Wreck Ralph Wrecks the Internet soundtrack, which I enjoyed the first movie. And at some point in time, I plan on seeing the second movie. It was a great family movie. I think it was very great. But Imagine Dragons here just seem to just kind of half-ass it. You know, they're like, we're getting paid for this anyway, so let's just write something down. And it ended up on the Origins album, too. I own it. I see it on the back here. And, yeah, it's, it's just one of their weaker tracks to me. There's nothing really catchy about it, and the chorus is just... Hello, hello, let me tell you what it's like to be a zero, zero, and I don't know, it just it does it just doesn't have that feel I would have in any other Imagine Dragons song that I do enjoy, and it's probably going to be one of the worst songs to come for a movie theme, um, probably since Ghostbusters, the new one, but, you know, 
shit happens like this. This ain't the first time they were part of really a bad song for a movie, the Suicide Squad soundtrack. Other than that, this song, whether it was part of this movie or not, is just not great. Number eight is Psycho by Post Malone. I have said before, I think he's a cool dude, but doesn't mean I have to like what he does, and I don't like his music. I don't like the way he raps. Um, some of the beats are fine, but most of the time, majority of the time, I just don't like the way he raps, and it just annoys me sometimes. He just seems really disinterested when he raps, like he's not interested in what he's doing at all. Like he's just got that like slouch feeling and that like, oh, uh, you know, I'm just gonna mumble, mumble and sing, sing my way through through this this song here and. It's just something like, I mean, come on. And I, I, I just, I don't know, I can never, I, I could never wrap my head around Post Malone's music. Um, it's, it's one of those things where I can see why people enjoy him and keep enjoying him, but I just, I can't get with the hype. He's just not, not really that big of a genius to me. It's just how I feel. Number seven, we have 30 Seconds to Mars with Rescue Me. Now, America was shit to begin with, and this was definitely one of the songs that I remember hearing where I'm like, wow, really? Like, another another um, live anthem. Great, that's what we needed. You already released Walk on Water. That wasn't enough. So let's pull out this song and use a bunch of trap beats and all this shit and... I could have chose one track, Mind, which is a definite trap song, but this one it just had to had to be on here because it's your stereotypical nostalgia song trying to get you pumped up, and it really does nothing for me. Don't get me wrong, I think Jared Leto's vocals on the thing are still good. I still think he's a decent vocalist, but I just, I don't know. Something about America and the change, it was just kind of like... Really, this is how far they've come after their first four albums were at least decent to good. Um, this one was just, I, I couldn't really find anything that great off of it. And this is one of the singles that I heard where I was just like, I know they can do better. I know they can definitely, definitely do better. These niggas think we playing chess. So what's next? Jump up out the bed like I'm possessed. I go out on tour and I say I'm drinking less. End up getting loose and getting pictures from my ex. SMS triple X. Number six, we have Drake with I'm Upset. The title says it for itself. Oh, boo hoo, whoop de doo doc, congratulations. Well, not really congratulations, you're upset. It sucks, I know, but to title the song that, it's like, okay, I get it. You're going through a bad time, blah, 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 this shit, this shit. It's something that I have heard before. Lyrically, he's not all that great either, so it doesn't help the song. I feel like if you can sing about stuff like that and have great lyrics to make it even a you know better like story kind of telling thing or make it somewhat poetic, it's fine. But this just kind of, I don't know, it's not catchy. The beat doesn't go well. Drake's always been a terrible rapper, he sounds like a dying camel, and it's just not appealing to me. Scorpion was not a good album either, and I despised this song in particular, so yeah, that's, that's my opinion on that one. I'm upset that I even have to put anything on here. No pun intended, as I said the last one. The track was called I'm Upset. But Eminem's Kamikaze was a surprise release, and 
majority of the album I did enjoy. But there's two songs that come back to back that I'm putting together as one because they're short songs and they kind of, you know, go right into each other when one of the song ends. And that's Nice Guy, Good Guy featuring Jesse Reyes. Um, in both songs, I think it's Jesse Reyes. I don't remember. And her vocals are just like, ugh, I don't know what the hell that is. Um, it's not one of Eminem's better rapping on the album. The one guy on Nice Guy who just like sucked my dick, all this stuff. It's like, Really? Like, like you, you were so great for the first ten tracks of the album, from from The Ringer to Fall. The only album I, or the only song I had problem with with the first five songs was, was Normal. Other than that, everything else was fine. And then right after Fall, you, you give us Nice Guy and Good Guy. Thank God it finished off with Venom, because that would have been highly disappointing if those were the two that finished off the album. But, yeah, I just, um... It was just not good. It was all over the place. It was just very, very flat vocal-wise, and it did not go well with the rest of the album in particular. Yep. Of course this is on here. Champagne by Five Finger Death Punch. Wah! The media doesn't like me. Wah! Wah! That's all I hear when I hear this song. Is fuck the media, they don't know me, they don't like me, they just want to talk negative about me. And you know what, even though that may be the case with some people, you know what real people do? They ignore it because they know that those companies and stuff only do that to get a rise out of the audi the, the um, musician and its au and their audience. Other than that, you don't need to sing about it. The title's not clever. Nothing about this song is c catchy at all. I gave this album a zero for a reason. It's just utter trash. Ivan Moody's never been a great vocalist to me, although I think they have some potential instrumental-wise. They just never struck me as this band being super talented. Just a bunch of wannabe, wannabe rock stars that aren't rock stars and just can't get it through their, their thick head that they're not. So, yeah, fuck this song. Cause girls like you Run around with guys like me Till sundown when I come through I need a girl like you, yeah, yeah Girls like you love fun and yeah Me do what I want when I come through I need a girl like you, yeah, yeah And here we have the only reason that Maroon 5 is playing the Super Bowl halftime show this year. Thank you very much. Girls Like You, Maroon 5, featuring Cardi B. Um, not all that interesting. The hook is not that clever, creative, it's not catchy, it doesn't hook me at all. There really is no hook to this thing either. It just sounds like a bunch of vo verses mixed together with them saying girls like you every so often and not... Don't get me wrong, the music video and the meaning of the song is cool. It's about being a strong woman and all that stuff. And I thought the music video, getting those celebrity cameos in there, was pretty cool to the female, um, the female actors in there. But the song just... I don't know. There, there's nothing, nothing about the song. I don't understand why this thing is so popular, why it's been number one for so long. Like, what is it supposed to do? Pump me up or make me feel bad for someone? pick one. So, yeah, Maroon 5 with another just, let's release a single because we want to be number one, and hey, it worked. Now they're playing the halftime show, so good job. Not really. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. I like my dick suck. I buy you a sick truck. I buy you some new tits. I get you that nip tuck. How you start a family to kind of Number two are the two lyrical geniuses themselves, Lil Pump and Kanye West, with I Love It. Lyrical genius, my asshole. First of all, when Kanye West has a song with the lyrics scoopity poop poop in them, makes me question, one, how old is he? And two, is he really a lyrical genius? And then, of course, there's a little, little pump in this track. 
Um, the lyrics are cringy, the beats cringy, the music video is cringy. Everything about this thing is just nothing's good about it. I mean, when you have lyrics that go, I'm a sick fuck, I like a quick fuck. First of all, that's weird. Second of all, you rhymed fuck with fuck. That's not really screaming lyrical genius to me. That's just screaming like, oh, I mean, you know, hey, let's just rhyme the same word together because it works. When really it doesn't work, but that's probably what was going through their heads. It's a terrible rap song, terrible trap song. Lil Pump is not talented. Kanye West has had some talent to me, but has never been that appealing to me where I would call him one of the best. And I'm sticking with my decision after hearing this piece of shit right here. Now you know how it is. Before we get to the number one worst song of the year, these are five dishonorable mentions that barely missed the list. I'm going to go through them rapid fire and just talk about them and tell you why they didn't make the list, but why they're some of the worst of the year. So here we go. The chipmunk chorus goes on for way too long and it really doesn't do anything much other than that. The verses are fine, it's just mainly the chorus that really shuts me off from this song. When you're known to be a heavier band, a ballad like Get Up does not suffice. It is very pop-worthy. Seems like they were just trying to sell out for a radio hit. And don't get me wrong, they've done ballads before. I mean, Second Chance is great. But after releasing a song like Devil and making Get Up the second single, it just doesn't fit, and it doesn't stick with me at all. Creepy lyrics, basically not a band, just Adam Levine doing cringy R&B hip-hop under a beat that's okay. Other than that, nothing spectacular. Tries too hard to be radioactive. And believer. And natural. Nothing about this song pumps me up. Nothing about the album pumps me up. Um, this just kind of left me dead in the water as to how I feel about it. Churches have had some really good softer songs, but this is just one off of their new album, as you can see behind me, that was forgettable to me. I feel like majority of the second half of the album wasn't the best part of the album, but there were songs that were like at least okay enough to where like, okay, I can get with this. Really gone? Not so much. Not so much. It's It just falls flat of what I want in a Church's song. Now that we got the rapid fire honorable mentions out of the way, Let's take a look at my worst song of 2018. You know what, Lil Pump and Kanye West? I'm gonna let you off with the hook. Because... I'm going to let you off the hook, because if it wasn't for this guy here, you would be number one on the list. But we have 6ix9ine with stupid, spelled S-T-O-O-P-I-D. Um, first of all, that's stupid. Um, second of all, 
Um, I don't get the appeal of 6 9 He just got pleaded guilty to this whole underage thing with a girl. And I, don't get me wrong, I'm not separating the person he is from his music. But at the same time, you do got to kind of look at that and be like, oh, you know, this guy is basically a pedophile in some way or child molester. Um, I think it's bad dish track. It's very childish. Nothing spectacular about it. The beat's fine. Um, the way he raps is just obnoxious, I feel. Like, it's okay to be obnoxious and rap, but I don't like that whole screaming thing he does. It just doesn't fit the atmosphere to me. It's never really been a big thing for me, you know, with, with him anyway. But, yeah, it's just flat-out terrible. All these other songs get a bigger pass because this song makes the other songs actually look like decent tracks that, you know, are actually good. This song, I can't tell you anything good about it at all, other than, like I said, maybe the beat, but that's a stretch as, as well. So yeah, those are my ten worst, that was five, stupid, ten worst songs of the year 2018, in my opinion, and five honorable mentions. You can tell me in the comments below if you disagree with me on some of these, if you agree with me, what were some of your worst songs of 2018. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Please remember to like and subscribe if you're on Facebook, share, and I will catch you for the best songs of 2018.